Good morning. Good morning. So I decided last week that we should introduce ourselves. I haven't told Leah this yet, but just when I realized that we had not we had not introduced ourselves since like our very first episode, I don't think. So I we're gonna do it, we're gonna do an introduction, especially since we are having a guest. Um, I'm Allison, I'm the technical services librarian at Fairfield County District Library. And today I have with me Mary, who wears many hats. Um, our she's a reference librarian, she's our teen services librarian. Um, and like most people, the library does a ton of other things, but she also orders our comics and graphic novels for teens and adults. And she's really good with plants, which is what we were talking about before we started. She was like admiring and diagnosing and giving advice as I held plants up to the screen before we began. <laughs> so welcome, Mary. You've been on here once before, right? And I was, because I was not here, so I did not watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully I have a better light set up. You're seeing it reflected in my glasses, but. No, me too. That's just, I know. <laughs> It's just the nature of wearing glasses, but it's been a hard year for glasses wearers. We've yeah. had masks for one, and then for two, having to be on camera and on video calls and Zoom and stuff and seeing the light reflected. I'm always in those meetings and my glasses are blue, you know, you can't yeah. see my eyes. And <laughs> so how are you doing this morning? Good. I'm currently trying to get my furnace to turn off in case you can hear that, but it sounds like my computer's about to start burning anyway, so. Oh, I well, payments. <laughs> it's only a little fuzz in the background. Okay. Um, it's really, it's okay. <laughs> We've got some good mornings in the comments. Good morning, morning. Liz and Anna and Andrea and the library. Good morning. Yeah, it's actually an artist I just spoke to. Um, she's a top I don't know if she's an actual comic book artist or not, but she draws in that style and um, oh, cool. has discussions about trying to get together to do um, something digitally, um, uh, some kind of comic thing, but it's hard that to figure out how to work with that in this current climate. But yeah, yeah I'm glad to see you today. Well, thank you for joining us, Anna. And that sounds like a really promising program idea. I'm sure we'll. I'm sure we'll get there and yeah. figure something out, but it is definitely a lot of major roadblocks for programming, at least the normal stuff that we would do. Things that are so straightforward in person end up with all these layers of complication when you're trying to do them online. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know better, you know better than me. But I, uh, as I said, yeah. Mary, our teen programming librarian, so all the things yeah. that she would normally do with teens are already kind of on the lower key side, you know, cause that's, you know, that's, that's what teens like, said the old woman. Um, <laughs> my kids like these days, but really, and so something very formal online is just not super engaging. No, and they're already having to do online school. So I, I feel like we're losing some of them, but we'll keep trying what we can to. to yeah. Them, so. Yeah, well, one thing you do a very good job of is ordering comics and graphic novels. And that's what we wanted to talk about today because both of us read them. Mary is excellent at selection. If you've ever checked out our selection at um, the library, it's Mary just, she really knows what she's doing and she orders great stuff. Um, we have comics in our teen section, in our juvenile section and our adult section, um, because nowadays there are so many to choose from. When Mary and I were younger, we did not have J comics. We did not have comics meant for children really. Um, so I wanted to ask before we got into it, Mary, what was like your first comics experience? Since now there are so many great things to choose from. You can walk into our children's department and Audrey or Shannon or anyone working there will be able to give a kid like really cool comics. Not, not so when we were kids. <laughs> no. um, yeah, it, for, it, actually I didn't start reading comics until after college or just my senior year in college. Okay. And it started right off with Sandman. And mm -hmm. I think I saw it on like a best of list or something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I've never read comics. Let's start with the best one. Mm -hmm. And I read the first trade and I did not like it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it, it, Preludes and Nocturnes is kind of just like a warm up. It is a prelude in a lot of ways. So it wasn't the most exciting volume of Sandman. Um, so I think the next, I finally picked it back up again. I feel like I was flying somewhere and I needed something to read. So I got the second one 
tried again. It was probably a few months later, and I just loved it. I just devoured the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It was so good. Like I still remember um, one of the main things I remember that I think about that's just one of the random funny things. Some characters go to a serial convent convention, but it's I think they spell it. I can't remember how it's. It's either the joke is that it sounds like it's for cereal, like the breakfast cereal, but they spell it like serial killer, and it's actually a convention for serial killers. Oh my gosh, that's but, really funny. Um, <laughs> awesome. And, like a million, a million spinoffs. Like Lucifer came out of Sandman, and like there's a bunch of new comics that have come out of Sandman. It just that's what I was actually going to ask you. If so. in one brief collection of sentences you could explain. Um, of course not. You can't explain the Sandman universe in one sentence, but just because I catalog these, like I get, I just brought this one because I just was able to go to the cart and pull something. There's just like the Sandman universe yeah. and then it's like, there's so many of them and I'm always calling Mary and I'm like, so do I put this under Sandman? Do I, I put, is this its own thing? What do I do? What even is the title of this? Is it the Sandman? Is it the dreaming or is it one magical movement or whatever? And um, yeah, we do talk about Sandman on the phone because we want to keep things together that need to be read together, but um, sometimes it becomes sprawling. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Sandman's by Neil Gaiman, Melanie. I, I know you know him. Um, I think you would probably like it. It's, and it's it sounds like one of those like, things based yeah it's fantasy based and it sounds like one of those things where uh, you could jump in at different points yeah and even though it is really sprawling not in an intimidating way where you have to start in one place you could probably probably start with book one but like in any one of those arms of the sandman universe yes. Yes. yeah um when i was a kid i read I read, like, I read newspaper comic strips a lot. And I read, I read Archie. I would buy Archie comics at like CVS or wherever or Kroger. I would buy, I would read comics in the newspaper. I'd buy Mad Magazine and read that. Um, and then I would buy like the collected books of like Garfield and, you know, read those because that was kind of, as far as like kid friendly stuff, that was about, all, you know, all there was. But it was really fun to read in that format. So it just, it took a long time for me too, to really sit down with something. And I did the, it's funny, it was the exact same thing you did. I was in college and um, I was reading like best of lists. And I actually have, I have it right here. I bought Watchmen, one of Time Magazine's 100 best novels. And I was yeah. like, why read books? Why not read this? And I really, really, really enjoyed this. Yeah. Um, and so then that kind of, I would dabble here and there after that, but I will admit it wasn't until I worked in a library and like saw everything that was available that I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much good stuff. Um, because I think a lot of people have a misconception that comics and graphic novels are mostly superheroes, which there are a lot of those mm -hmm. undoubtedly, but it is not mostly that. And superhero comics, I find, especially early on, can be really daunting because, I mean, Sandman, there's a lot of Sandman books, but there were only a whole, like, the whole extended universe more recently. So if you wanted to read Sandman, you had, like, nine or ten books and you were done. You knew what order they went in and everything. If you want to read Spider-Man or Captain America, it's, I mean, there might be five books in one of the runs, but there's like a million runs. It started in the 60s or 50s. Where do you start? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the authors change mid, you know, arc. Like, how do you start reading superhero comic books? Mm -hmm. um, so it took me a long time to feel up to it. But the thing that actually um, got me into it was um, I, I saw Captain America Winter Soldier and I just fell in love with Bucky, fell in love with Captain America and that whole arc. And I found out that that was based on Ed Brubaker's run. So, and also that <laughs> side effect of reading superhero comic books is you get to make lists. So I, I started reading Brubaker's Captain America and never looked back. So it was really awesome work to figure out what order if you do like to read chronologically, but um, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, and I will say that not to not to throw you out there on the fire or anything, but if you do have trouble with that, you can call the library and probably someone will be very polite to you and say, I'll let you talk to Mary when uh, she's available. Um, but Mary is happy to help with that kind of thing because 
you have you've dug into it and you figured it out for yourself and yeah. um and you you know how daunting it can be yes yes <laughs> but, um, but don't, don't be afraid of it yeah you want to do some comments? Yes. Um, and I see the one about the Sandman illustrated by Amano. So my cats are fighting over here. I'm going to deal with my cats real quick. Okay. I'm not married to deal with their cats. I'm, I will go ahead. She'll come back to that in a fair second. I don't have any animals, so there's not ever that excitement happening over here. Andrea says that she had Calvin and Hobbes books growing up, which I did too. And I have such good memories of Calvin and Hobbes. Um, and those books, I think we all we can all picture them. We all know what they look like. We still have those at the library too. So it's not like they've ever been supplanted. Um, the other thing I think, or go ahead, Mary, if you. If you <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. said. Oh no, you're fine. Talk about the Sandman. Okay. Yes, I'll have to look and see um, when I get back to the library if we have that. And if we don't, I might have to think about getting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's and I don't know. That's the other cool thing is uh, there's just so much to choose from and comics like. I don't know, they just keep popping up and there's just like so many different things. Mary, when you were talking about um, trying to dig into a run of a comic, when we catalog comics, we were gonna talk about this briefly, we did, there's two, there's basically, there's not a ton of ways to order things on your shelves. You need to put things on the shelf in a way that makes sense to people. And there are really only very few options for how to do that. And it's usually by title or by author. And so we um, went back and forth, I've worked at, two libraries who did it two different ways. I don't think there's a wrong way. We just went back and forth trying to figure out what's the most straightforward thing. And we put our comic books and graphic novels under the title, alphabetically by title or superhero name instead of title. So all the Batman books are under Batman. If it's not a series like that, it just goes under the title. It doesn't go under the author. And every now and then we have a panicked moment on the phone thinking, we didn't do the right thing, but this, we do that so that we don't have to, you're not jumping around for a series that has been written by multiple people. Yes. Yeah. You have anything to add to that? So we often change our minds. Like there are some that will come in. Like I remember talking about Royals, which was about the Inhumans. Oh but gosh, and that's the other thing that Mary's so good at because she does know this stuff. She reads it, that's the other thing. If you had someone ordering this who didn't read it, it would I would I would my position would be much harder. But I can call her and I could be like, so how much is this really about the Inhumans, and how much is this its own thing? Is it its own what do you call it event? Yes, yes, yes. Because we yeah. often will put events together because they'll come with their big event book, but then they'll come up with a lot of other um, individual issues and but they're not so tied into the regular runs of those comics that we think that i don't know we just often will put events together but not always because like age of x like that one is just a reset it's an event but it's also a reset so those ones are kind of half and half it's just it's a weird mix of deciding um of trying to figure out what is, I, I don't know, it's just a weird mix. Yeah, and I think we, we don't want to keep anyone from finding something. And I think no. we do try to lean, if we have to be swayed one way, we, I think we do try to lean to like, what would the comic book industry, like if you were in a comics shop, would these be grouped together? Because that's how people are used to thinking about them. Not that comic shops exist anymore in great number, but just we, we try to think about that too. We do have a question about, um, do we agree the graphic novels are separate from comics? I think yes, but we don't shelve them separately. They are different, but we don't have different shelving for them. Yeah. But we see, we only agree with that in a technical sense, not in a graphic novels instead of comic book sense. Graphic novels are an unserialized mm -hmm. bound form. So like some of Raina Telgemeier's books, um, or some of these DC young adult uh, graphic novels that are coming out that are not made up of serialized uh, individual issues. Comic books are the individual serialized issues bound in a trade format. So some people would still call that a, a graphic novel, but um, we go for the more technical term. If it's not made up of serialized individual issues, that's a comic book, or that's a graphic novel. If it is made up of serialized individual issues, that's a comic book. 
Yes, and we sense, yes, they are separate. They are separate, but we don't show them separately. If we did show them separately, um, that would be an instance where those graphic novels would probably be under authors instead of titles because they're not a serialized situation and they're not going to be a series that has multiple authors within it. We would shelve those under author's last name, but we, we have not done that. We just put them all under one umbrella and for what it is worth saying, we also place no value judgment on which one is better. So, um, okay, what was next? What else? Um, I did want to ask also, what do you have a, it sounds like probably not, but do you have like a genre of comics that you prefer? Not really, because it's so much for me about the style of the art yeah. um, that gets me into something. Mm -hmm. Like I, I still haven't read Lumberjanes just because it's a little bit more cartoony than I like. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm as much as I like comic books, I don't like like movie and animation, like cartoons. Mm -hmm. um, um, like that you see on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it looks more like that, I'm probably not going to like it as much or be as inclined to read it. I still really want to read Lumberjanes and we'll read it eventually, but. Um, yeah, I brought, I brought one home with me because oh, yeah. I did want to make sure we talked about that. This um, Lumberjanes, I, I don't, I also have never read Lumberjanes. Audrey yeah. or someone from Audrey, Audrey, Audrey may have a comment for us. Um, but I do know it is a really excellent uh, older kid, younger teen, probably. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. type of I mean, it's going J, but I like it so much, I just buy it for teen. For teen. Um, so. And, and so, like, we have, there are a lot of really excellent, I actually brought a handful of teen comics, and yeah. I will go through them quite briefly because I haven't read them, so I don't. Yeah. Um, like, I'm also really, I really like Goldie Vance. She's like a detective a la Nancy Drew, um, which is super cute. You can tell already the clothes are really cute. That's apparently mostly what matters to me is how cute it is. Um, and then just because it also like really strikes me because we didn't have this stuff when I was this age. Um, this is like a more serious comic um, or a more serious book. It's called Dark, The Dark Matter of Mona Star. And um, it's about a girl struggling with uh, depression and she calls it her dark matter. And um, this has some really interesting style to it. And it's just, I see these things on the cart and it's just, there was nothing so fun. I would have been, as a kid, I would have been all over Goldie Vance because yeah. I read those Archie comics. Speaking of Archie, there's a whole revival of Archie as well, especially because of Riverdale. When you talk about like series branching out, I mean, there's the one where Jughead is the werewolf. Yeah. You had yeah. the hunger, I believe it's yeah. called. Um, and so just there's so many exciting things for younger comics readers. And I just, I wish I would have had that at that time, but that doesn't mean I can't read them now. <laughs> yeah. my, nieces, my nieces already love comic books. I have had so much fun. Like I, I've given them Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. They love it. They love DC Superhero Girls. There's nothing like reading a comic book to your five-year-old niece. It's, it's the best. Well, and it's kind of like, I mean, it's still the engagement of a picture book because you can see, you you talk about what's happening in the frames, you know? Like, it's just like all types of engagement there, I would imagine. Um, yeah. We do have more comments. Audrey says that uh, Lumberjanes is amazing for kids age, ages 9 to 99. So. Yes, I agree. Uh, I wanted to, uh, Anna, your question about um, plans to show indie or self-published comics. Um, we do have zine programs, um, or we used to have zine programs, um, which is kind of in the same vein. And um, we, at various times, have nursed a zine library. Um, so in that respect, yes. Um, and hopefully, and I've thought about doing a zine program digitally. I'm just not exactly sure how it would work, but that might be one of those things that I ask for your assistance on down the road. Um, but yes, yes. Um, yeah, Audrey's already jumped on Andrea's question. Do you guys have recommendations for tweens nine to 12? And that um, Zeta the Space Girl, I think uh -oh. Andrea, I think that is a really good fit um, that Audrey mentioned. And then, gosh, I started talking, I had one. Um, I'll come back to it. Go ahead. The, answer a different question, Mary, and I'm gonna think about this for a second. Um, well, uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. My 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 nieces are a little younger than that, but um, I think that it is still good for that age group. 
And another one I actually have here. Well, I have a photocopy of the cover. This one might be more for 12-year-olds, Unstoppable Wasp. It's really, really good. Um, one conversation I've had with my sister is, how am I going to talk to my nieces eventually about some of these hard topics that you have to talk about your, with your daughters? Really? They talk about them in that comic. I'm like, let them read that comic and then talk about what happens in the comic or talk about it before and then yeah. read the comic together. Um, not that that's the first thing you're looking for when you're, you're <laughs> it's also really fun. It's like all about science and adventure and, and, um, and girls being awesome. I remembered another recommendation for Andrea, um, also by Raina Telgemeier the well, in part uh, the new, um, the new babysitters club. Oh, graphic novels are really, really popular. Is she the author of those? She may be, she may have just been the author of the, Anyway, but yes, there's there's Babysitter's Club graphic novels and um, those are super cute too. And yeah, it just, there are there are a lot. Yes. There's a lot of really good stuff. Yeah. I see a question about favorite and least favorite. What are some of your favorites? Well, I have I was kind of laying this out and I was thinking about, um, so Mary, one of the first things that Mary and I bonded over was Lady Killer by Joelle Jones. Um, and it's just, it's just two comics, right? Just two trade yeah, so versions. Bad. And it's about like this fifties housewife who's also an assassin. Um, and the art is really lovely and wonderful. Um, and, but I found that I think what I like reading the most, and it's funny because I don't read this in regular print is I like the comics that are more like noir and crime. Like you mentioned Ed Brubaker. I really like Ed Brubaker's whole thing, whatever, whatever that is that he does with all those like crime comics, um, Red Weekend, Cruel Summer. Yeah. Well, the, the, they're all different, but like, I like reading Ed Brubaker. Really good. Um, I read one recently called, um, not by him, called Bog Bodies. And it was very, oh, sorry. It, it was very short and it was set like in Ireland or something. Yeah. And it was very depressing. Um, but I just, for some reason, I like, those are the things I gravitate toward, but I don't read things like that usually. I like, I guess I must like that art. Yeah. Um, people have opinions about his work in superhero comics, but Brian Michael Bendis did a lot of uh, true crime, very noirish. Um, yes, I've read his stuff too. If you give me yeah. an example, I might have read it, but yes, I have. Yeah. Is one of my favorites. Jinx is another good one. I think Fire. Um, and you might like his Scarlet series. Okay. It's like, well, he has an older, uh, like single trade, and he's he has he also brought it back recently. Okay, um, I think you would probably like that. Yeah, I like the and I like the stuff too that's like old Hollywood or like nineteen thirties. You know, I like I, something about that that very stark contrast, usually in the colors and the style. I enjoy that. And then yeah. finally, the other thing I don't really read the superhero stuff, but I do really I really liked Astro City, which you know because I talked to you about Astro City so much. <laughs> what we bought it on your recommendation because well, it, it just it's a it's a superhero you know there's multiple stories within each one and it's just like it follows like these different groups of superheroes sometimes the story isn't really even about the hero it's about an average person and then the hero becomes involved but i just so i really liked that about that that it was really a really broad look at like what life as a superhero would be like or life in a world where there were superheroes, you know, sort of in that vein of Watchmen being like, what would this really be like, but not like Watchmen? I don't know. So I recommend Astro City. I like those. <laughs> what about you? Um, my all time favorites still right now are um, Saga and um, Southern Bastards. Um, but some of my recent favorites, um, one that's an ongoing favorite that I, I'm actually what I'm reading right now. I don't know if anyone's heard of Beasts of Burden. It's um, it's about a bunch of um, dogs and cats that fight supernatural creatures. They just had a crossover with Hellboy. We got Mike Min Mignola. Well, it's not that recent, but it's recent in this trade that I've, I'm finally getting to. Um, but yeah, just a bunch of dogs and cats fighting supernatural creatures and it's not for kids. It is definitely not for kids. Um, it, it's it's really good, and it's got kind of a dark art style, kind of dirty and grungy. Like the dogs are definitely cute, but 
you wouldn't look at it initially and think, oh, this is cute, but no, it's it's really, really good. Um, and then another recent favorite um, that I'm really, really liking the world that, that she's creating, um, Invisible Kingdom uh, from D. Willow Wilson and Christian Ward. Um, it's, I mean, it's sci-fi, it's fantasy, it's, it's kind of, um, it's a bunch of misfits flying around, running from uh, the governing body of this world. And then uh, they pick up this, um, oh, they're not a woman. They, this this uh, species has four different genders. I can't remember what their gender is. Um, uh, they're a nun, uh, but not in like the way that you think of it. They, well, kind of think of it as a monk, but the person runs away with them because they're exposing um, nefarious undertakings and just, it's just about the adventures they get into. It's just a really interesting, like, found family story. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just really good. Like, the art style is just incredible. It's very painterly and abstract. Yeah. But that looks like the kind of thing that you could have, like, as a print. Mm -hmm. You know, like, very landscapey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would I would put any of that art on my wall. It's just cool. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, that's really, really cool. And I definitely, you know, when you have something like requested or whatever. I'm like, oh, well, maybe I should read that because Mary has that on hold. Um, did you read, I think you did, um, The Woods? I still haven't read it, but it's been on my list forever. I'm gonna get um, to it. I don't know the author, I'm sorry. This is just coming to me now, but um, it's basically it's basically about a, like a high school where like this kind of- That's James Tinian, James Tinian. Yes. yes, that's the one. High school where like some cataclysmic event happens and suddenly like, everything around the perimeter has the high whole high school been like moved to someplace else or is everything around the perimeter gone it's I, one or the other and so there's you know kind of like a survival situation where yeah. there's like the student council and the teachers and then the, the rogue band of kids and um i'm probably making it sound lamer than it is it was really entertaining i enjoyed it you did read it there's a lot to that i only read like the first Cause you know, you know how this is the other complication sometimes with cataloging graphic novels. You have that first trade edition, then you have like many of them bound into one book. And then you have, you know, the uh, omnibus edition or whatever. And so sometimes I read the one that was the book. So it was like the longer one of multiple trade ones. And I read book one and then I didn't read anything else. And now, now I forget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the backstagers. Um, uh, was mentioned as being really cute. And that I, 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 haven't, I haven't read those, but that that's about like the people who work backstage like in drama club, right? Like in a yeah. theater class, yeah. And I think it's got a tinge of supernatural, but I'm not positive. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's, it looks really, really good. And we have a question about favorite favorite web comics. You know that one, because I got one of my favorites from you. Oh, wait, you did? Which one? Stranger Planet? Oh yeah, Stranger Planet. We do love yeah. we love Stranger Planet so much. Oh I could I do have a Stranger Planet shirt. Yeah. Strange Planet. Strange Planet. Planet and the second book was Stranger Planet. Yeah, yeah. so I do have a Strange Planet shirt. Um so we do like that as a webcomic. We I also like poorly drawn lines. Um I don't know if you ever read that, but I don't really um that's just it's just another just observational and i really do like web comics because they take me back to um being a kid and reading garfield or whatever and i used to like i used to be very different and carefree when i was a kid i used to laugh so hard at like garfield <laughs> i would just like laugh like it would just boil out of me um reading garfield and so i get some kind of that same feeling when you only have like four panels to like make me laugh or whatever. I really like that about web comics. I realize not all web comics are funny, but those are the ones that I like because yeah. they take me into that. <laughs> um, one of my favorite, it's really old school. And now he's gone on to do superhero comics. And um, I think he's writing Jughead right now, or he has written Jughead. Dinosaur comics is one of my favorites. I'm not um, familiar. It, it just was like very like line drawing pictures of like a dinosaur and, and, um, I think different stick figures, um, or no, that was XKCD is stick figures. That was Ryan. Oh uh, yeah, those. More comics. Um, but one of my favorite ones, I wish I, could, I had it, I should have had it on hand. They did one about one of my favorite 
things to talk about in college. I, I think they did one about Walter Benjamin. They either did one about Walter Benjamin or they did one about the male gaze. <laughs> um, which when I was talking about it in college, no one else was talking about it yet. I had to explain it every time <laughs> that I wasn't talking about gay people. So I was about gays with a Z. With a Z. Well, so these are certainly, uh, these are definitely just your very basic lighthearted fare, it sounds like. Yes, like how we care about, you know, well, Walter Benjamin. theory and, and, and media criticism, you know. <laughs> Every I, day. Forgot, I forgot about XKCD. Yeah. I, I forgot about that. Yeah, I have, I have some 3D printed figures from, from uh, that I have like on my, at work, I have some 3D printed XKCD characters. <laughs> Man, so we've hit our time really, but I feel like we barely scratched the surface of anything as usual, but it was really nice to talk to you about comics. Yes. Um, and nice to talk to everyone in the comments about comics. Please, uh, if you have anything else, share it down there or any other questions. Um, hopefully we can do this again, Mary. Yes, definitely. Yeah. We'll always talk about comics with anybody that asks. <laughs> right. And, and it would be great uh, if we could do, as you mentioned in the beginning, some type of comic art program, maybe. Yes. Maybe yes. put something together down the line. Definitely. Yeah. Well, it was great to see you, and I hope everybody has a great weekend and enjoys the sun today. Yes. <laughs> and actually, Bert made one. He's here to say goodbye from Bert. Oh, and he's not knocking your camera over or anything. He's not knocking my stuff over. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.